This morning I spoke with John Kirby, the National Security Council communications coordinator. So Prime Minister Netanyahu spoke overnight about the situation in Israel. And when he was asked about the role post-war of the Palestinian Authority, he said this, that the Palestinian Authority, quote, pays murderers and educates their children to hate Israel and to my sorrow to murder Jews and ultimately for the disappearance of the state of Israel, he added, we would be putting the same element, utterly unreformed, utterly unchanged, into Gaza. Is that what the Biden administration expects Israel to do? Well, I think he hit it right on the head when he talked about uh, a PA that's unreformed. One of the things that Secretary Blinken uh, was talking to uh, our Israeli counterparts uh, about when he was there was the need to reform the Palestinian Authority, a revitalized Palestinian Authority that is much more, uh, much more able to meet the aspirations and the needs uh, of the Palestinian people. We agree uh, that that's not the case right now. What, what is the plan, though? I, I mean, what would the U.S. role be? Who should be governing? I mean, Netanyahu has said they don't want to occupy it. They don't want to control it. Right. So what happens next? Well, we agree with him on that, too. We, uh, we don't want to see uh, Israel reoccupy Gaza. We don't think that that's a, a long-term strategic goal that's, uh, that's really achievable or wise for the Israeli people. Uh, we believe that, uh, at the core, the, the future of governance in Gaza has got to be something that the Palestinian people have a vote in, a voice in, uh, that they, they, have, they have a governance that is truly uh, representative of them and their aspirations. Now, what exactly that looks like, Shannon, we don't know. But we are asking the same questions you're asking me of ourselves and of our partners to see what we can do in the region, working again with, uh, with both Israeli and Arab partners, to see what a revitalized, reformed Palestinian Authority could look like. And could that reformed Palestinian Authority actually be able to, to govern Gaza in a way that, again, meets those aspirations? That, those are the same questions we're asking ourselves. Uh, we don't have firm answers right now, but, uh, but we don't believe it's too early uh, to be looking hard at this. Yeah, and there's a lot of probably heartbreak and destruction between here and there as conflict and fighting has resumed in the region. There's obviously coordinated mess messaging out from the administration this weekend about the current strategy underway in Israel. Here's a little bit from the Secretary of Defense here at the Reagan Forum and also the Vice President. The center of gravity is the civilian population. And if you drive them into the arms of the enemy, you replace a tactical victory with a strategic defeat. No forcible displacement, no reoccupation, no siege or blockade. So the question is, is that a public message for Israel? Because I imagine you're having those same conversations privately. Or was that message for the more progressive wing of the president's own party who was saying things like this? No, actually, Shannon, um, you, hit, you hit it again in the first part of your question. This is a, this is a consistent message that we have been uh, taking to our Israeli counterparts uh, privately. And of course, obviously, we're, we're talking publicly, too, about the same big goals. And I would tell you, Shannon, that and Secretary Blinken talked about this before he left Israel, that. Uh, the Israelis have been receptive to those messages. And just look, in fact, you know, if you talk about civilian casualties, Yes, they are conducting some shaping operations for, for potential moving uh, operations in the south. They've actually put up a map online uh, that is identified for the people of Gaza, areas where they should not go and areas where they can go uh, with a measure of safety. Now, I don't know of too many modern militaries uh, that actually take that extra step. So uh, they clearly are trying to make an effort to be more precise and more cautious here. And that's, of course, something we've been urging them to do li literally uh, from the beginning of the conflict. That's not something that a current sitting congresswoman believes is actually happening. Here's her take on what's happening and our role in it. What we are witnessing is the gross violation of human rights in Gaza. And that is being done with U.S. military assistance. So what is your message to her and others on the progressive left of the president's party who are what, saying these things publicly? What's being done with U.S. military and security assistance is helping our friend and partner Israel go after a truly genocidal threat, a threat posed by Hamas. And I think it's just too easy as we get further and further away from the 7th of October to forget what happened on that day. 1,200 Israelis literally slaughtered kids in front of their parents, parents in front of their kids. Um, and we've got to help Israel eliminate the threat to the, to the Israeli nation and the Israeli people from that threat from Hamas. And we're going to keep doing that. Absolutely. Now, look, at the same time, just like you and I have been talking now for 
few minutes. Uh, we want them to do it in, in the most careful, cautious, deliberate way possible. How they do this matters, as Secretary Blinken has said, and we're continuing to work with them. And again, I would stress that the Israelis have been receptive to those messages, and they have actually altered the way they have been conducting some of their operations. Now, I also want to say, clearly, too many thousands of individuals, civilians, have been killed. Too many more thousands have been wounded. We have more than a million that have been internally displaced in Gaza. We're not blind to the humanitarian crisis, which is why we work so hard to get that pause in place for seven days so that we could get hostages out and get an accelerated amount of food, water, medicine, and fuel into Gaza. So we're, we're certainly working on, on the humanitarian plight here. Uh, but I, I think we've, we've got to stay core to what happened on the 7th of October and remember the threat that the Israeli people are still facing from Hamas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's existential. And, and, but critics uh, of the guidance or the conversations that we're having publicly and privately with Israel um, say that the Biden administration is making demands that Israel cannot actually fulfill. Here's from the Wall Street Journal editorial board. If Israel must do more to protect civilians but can't evacuate them and can't hit Hamas when it hides in key civilian infrastructure and safe zones, how is it to fight at all? Israel deserves U.S. support as it topples Hamas, not a repeat of Mr. Biden's Ukraine treatment. They say was rules, restrictions and hesitations that push a decisive victory further away. How much of this council that you're having privately with Israel um, requires them to pass any decisions by us before <laughs> None. they take them? None. I mean, th this th that argument just isn't it just doesn't comport with the facts that we're late that we're laying down restrictions or sort of red lines for Israel. Uh, this, Israel's a sovereign nation attacked in a brutal way on the seventh of October. They have every right and responsibility to go after the terrorist group uh, that perpetrated those, those attacks and plan them. And oh, by the way, has made it clear they're going to do it again and do more. They have every right and responsibility to go after them. We would do the same thing. Any nation would. Now, what we have done is talk to them, share our perspective and our lessons learned about urban warfare, as Secretary Austin said, uh, about not turning a tactical victory into a strategic defeat. Of course, we're going to share that. That's what friends do. But they're making these decisions. They're deciding the targets that they're going to hit. Uh, we obviously will continue to talk to them about being as careful and cautious as, as possible. We don't want to see any more innocent civilians killed. And I don't think The Wall Street Journal wants that either. Uh, but, we, we, but we are not going to stop giving them the security assistance that they need to go after this, as you quite accurately put it, an existential threat to the Israeli people. Now, quickly, I want to make sure that we ask, uh, how many Americans do we think are still hostages? Why don't we have them back? When do we get them back? Well, Shannon, we think the number, obviously, is somewhere in the neighborhood of eight to nine, probably more like nine. We're not, we don't have perfect visibility on all of those Americans, so that's why we're being a little bit careful with the, uh, with the specificity of the numbers, but that's kind of the population that we believe it is. Um, uh, we, we know that there's at least one other American woman who's unaccounted for. We don't know much about her, her condition, where she is, and I would say the same thing, unfortunately, about the other Americans that are being held hostage. We just don't have perfect visibility. Now, we're getting some information from the families who, that, who at least are helping us understand uh, why they believe their loved ones were taken hostage, and the Israelis are also trying to flesh out some of our information. But we're working at this literally by the hour. We want to get that pause put back in place so that, again, more hostages come, can come out. I'll say this, two things, if you'll allow me. One, Hamas is the reason that the, that the pause ended, because they refused to, to put on the list additional women and children that we know they that they are holding, and they're refusing to let go. Uh, and, and two, uh, we are working it literally by the hour to see if we can't get this back on track. John Kirby, we always appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Good to be with you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.